In this episode of Unboxing with a Rocket Scientist, we're going to take a look at the Apogee Components and Terry's Explorer Model Rocket Kit. There are many unboxing videos for model rockets, but wouldn't you like a real rocket scientist's opinion of the materials and parts in the kit? Today you'll actually find out the inside information so that you know what to look for when you get a rocket kit. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan, and yes, I am a real rocket scientist. Um, we're going to open up the Antares rocket, and full disclosure, we have built this since this is an Apogee kit, and this is about how big it is. Um, as you can see here, um, we have a nice face card that is nice and colorful. It shows you the paint scheme of the rocket, which is pretty simple. Um, it's silver and red. Uh, let's open it up and see what's inside. So, you know, the first thing that I see looking at this is this big long tube. Now, this is a BT55 tube, and I know that because we manufacture it here, um, which is about 1.3 inches in diameter. And this is a full 18 inches long. Um, also in the kit, we have a paper tube and this is the engine mount for this. And both of the tubes, as you can see, have white paper on them, uh, which makes it easy to uh, draw lines with a pencil. And you wanna use a pencil when you draw lines on the rocket uh, because when you go to paint it, um, if you use pen, what happens is the solvent in the paint will attack the ink and the ink will actually float up to the surface. So that's why we want to use a pencil and that's why our tubes are white so that you can mark them easy and you can see them. Uh, also in here, like I said before, this, this piece of paper here is called the face card and it shows you what the rocket looks like along with features and benefits and tools and materials that you'll need and some of the rocket engines that it will fly on. Now this will fly on 24 millimeters, which is what that tube was. So you can use an Estes-C um, and you can use all the way up to an F engine. Aerotech makes an F engine that will fit into the rocket kit. Although um, right here it says the E20 is probably the largest. Um, it might be a length thing. Uh, we'll take a look at that. Um, yeah, I'm sure it's a length because this rocket kit, I'm looking at the back end of the rocket kit over here and we have an engine clip and this is going to limit you to the, the maximum length of the rocket motor. Ah, okay, but inside, I'm trying to get all the parts out here. All right, so the first thing that we see is this right here, which is the instruction sheet. And this is feels pretty hefty and it's uh, 10 pages. So um, it's a pretty big, big, big instruction book um, on the uh, front. We have a picture of the rocket plus, you know, a description, uh, parts list and tools and materials and optional finishing supplies. Um, and then inside You'll see we have um, the wraps. Um, these are called the tube marking guides. Um, these are for the fins. Um, and there's two of them. Um, one here for the big tube and then one for the smaller tube. And you're saying, well, this is the engine mount. Why would I need to mark that? Um, and the reason is on the back end of the rocket, you'll see these uh, extra details and they're glued directly to this engine tube. So we need to mark the position of those little pieces. Uh, but then on the inside of this, you'll see there are a lot of illustrations. We like to use a lot of illustrations to make it easy to assemble because some people, they don't want to read. Um, they would just want to look at the pictures and but so we include them both. Um, if you have any problems with the pictures, you can just read the instructions right there and it tells you in the instructions, there's also tips and techniques, you know, um, how to hold things as you're putting things together. That does actually make a, a big difference. Uh, so there's the instruction sheet. 
Um, also in here, you'll notice that these are our decals. There's a lot of decals. They're very colorful, lots of paint pa uh, flag patterns on it. Um, it's actually printed on vinyl material. Um, so these are like a sticker where you peel them off, uh, but the material is actually clear. Um, so you can actually see through it. So if I peel one off, you can see, you know, I can see through it. Um, so it's clear vinyl that these are printed on. Um, and then the reason for that is so that you can see some of the color through. So, you know, we're, um, you can actually see the silver showing through the decal, which makes it a little bit easier to paint. Um, and then we have this. These are our laser cut fins. Now, this material is not balsa wood. This is basswood. Um, and the, there's a few reasons to use basswood. Uh, one is it's stronger than balsa wood. Now, this is 3 32nd inch, so it's a little bit thinner than eighth inch. Um, so you need something a little bit stiffer, and that's what this is. It's stiffer. Uh, basswood is also a domestic hardwood that's grown here in the United States, so it's a lot easier to get than balsa wood. Um, occasionally, there are balsa wood shortages, um, but we can always get basswood since it's grown domestically here. Um, and you see these are laser cut, and so they'll pop right out. And you can see all those little pieces down here that are those little details on the back end of the rocket. Uh, we also have, and you're going to like this, this is an, a laser cut cardstock. Um, the parts that you use in the rocket are these rings, and these are the centering rings for centering the engine mount. Uh, but then these big ones here are actually uh, construction jigs so that everything lines up perfect um, so that your fins are going to be perfectly aligned. Um, and that's what that is for. So you get um, two jigs plus the two rings that are all laser cut. Um, this is the launch lug and this is a quarter inch. Um, so this, go this flies off of a larger pad and the reason for using a larger pad um, is because it takes a 24 millimeter diameter motor. So this is a mid power rocket. And so um, when we're flying mid power engines, we want to fly off a mid power pad, which means we're going to use a thicker launch lug on the side of the rocket. And you can see it's right here and it kind of blends in with the decor of the rocket. And this has six fins. Plus, um, plus these two little um, antenna-like panels right here. Um, those are made out of these balsa dowels, and there's two of those. Um, we also have, um, this is the engine block, and this is for the engine hook. Um, now, this is a longer engine hook. This is a three and three-quarter inch engine hook. So this is good for Estes E engines and Aerotech E's and F's. Um, and you'll see this is spring steel. Um, you know, you, so you can bend it and it always comes back straight because it's very stiff, which, which we really like. Um, also, uh, here we have a um, Kevlar shock cord. And this is 300 pound, so this is a lot stronger than a typical shock cord. You'll never break it. Um, and it's nice and long so that it allows the nose cone to come off without it zippering the body tube. Um, and then finally here we have our plastic parachute. And this is one of our bigger parachutes, but it's, there's a special feature about it. And we call it the cut to size parachute. So you'll see that it starts out as big and colorful. But then if you look at it closely, um, it's got lines which allows you to choose what size parachute. So you can choose an 18 inch, 15 inch or a 12 inch. And this particular kit, let me see what it calls for. Um, I can see right here in step number 24, it calls it use the 15 inch size. 
So that's the medium size parachute you'll cut on this line right here. Um, and then you'll put these reinforcement rings on the corners and these are very, very hard to tear. Um, so that, so when you tie the, the string to it, they're almost impossible to tear the, 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 the uh, strings out of the canopy. Usually the canopy will break first um, the shock or the string here is a cotton thread and this is heavy duty cotton. Um, and we use that on our parachutes because they're easier to tie for, for younger kids. You know, when the, when the cord is thicker, it's easier to feel it between your fingers. And so it's easier to tie knots. So that's why we use that thicker string. Um, and it's also stronger. Um, so you get this double benefit. Um, and it's cotton, and cotton will burn, but it's a lot more heat resistant than polyester thread. So that's another reason why we use cotton, because it's, it's harder to, uh, to damage the actual string. So this, oh, uh, finally, <laughs> I forgot the last most important piece is the nose cone. Um, this is a BT-55, like I said. Um, it has a big, strong loop on the back, and you'll never break that um, and it's got a big hole in it so you can pass the uh, parachute strings easily through so again we try to make this as easy to build as possible um, we call this a skill level three so that's kind of like right in the middle apogee we use a skill level one to a skill level five five being the hardest so three is like right in the middle so you'll have no problems building this rocket, particularly with the good instructions that we have available. We also have um, videos on our website that will show you the different techniques, such as putting a fin fillet on, how to attach a parachute, things like that. So um, if you ever have any questions, um, you can come to our website, go to the Antares rocket page, and on that page, we'll list a number of videos that we think that might be helpful for, for people that need some extra help. So this was the Antares Explorer. My name again is Tim Van Milligan. And yes, I am a real rocket scientist. Um, you'll find this here at Apogee Components. And our web address is www.apogeerockets.com. So may the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true.